I often hear criticism to other projects, especially GNOME, because they use JavaScript, and as we all know, JavaScript is banned as low and crushes, but does Kitty actually use JavaScript? To what extent? And if so, can we just get rid of it? So before we get into that, I just want to say a quick thing. One, thank you to all the donations, and be important, tomorrow I'm going to try to live stream my first live stream and you can do like ask me questions regarding specific bits of the code that I can walk, uh, walk through you through anything you would like and you know if you want to learn about something something specifically you can just come tomorrow and ask me and I'll do my best to actually show you anything that's in my power to explain. So getting back to the actual videos idea. Does KDE use JavaScript? And the answer is yes, pretty much everywhere actually. And this might come off a surprise. And if you think about KDE Plasma, all of KDE Plasma interface is actually written on, actually it relies on JavaScript because all of the interface is written in QML and QML uses JavaScript for evaluations of properties. And also all of the new applications like Discover, part of system settings, but also Calendar, KD Connect, the actual application, they're all written in Kurigami. And Kurigami uses QML, which again relies on JavaScript. So JavaScript is actually used throughout KDE whenever we have a user interface. We don't use it, uh, QML, I mean, when uh, like, let's say older applications, so like Ocular, Gwenview, those use K-widgets, which are different, but all of the new ones uh, and the KD Plasma do use QML and JavaScript. So why do we do that? And the simple reason is that QML is actually pretty good in what it prom promises to do. It's very, very easy to do an interface and edit an interface in QML, even for non-programmers. We've got a lot of de designers, and if you're not experienced with C++, don't worry, you can make a big impact on KDE's code just by working on QML. I, myself, mostly do QML-related stuff. So, why does QML use JavaScript? And, well, you should ask that to Qt, but uh, it's a good fit actually to QML. Personally, I don't like JavaScript. I don't like it as a programming language, but it works really well inside of it. Let me actually show you an example of what QML does and how it works. Just give me a sec. So this is QML. And you can see that, let's go to the beginning. We've got, uh, as an example, this ID is configuration area. Now this configuration area is a variable uh, and probably, I don't know how it's implemented under the hood, but probably this is a JavaScript uh, variable because inside of this text, I can put uh, any, maybe not this one, but this one, the ID is a bit special, but this one, sorry, uh, 100 and 1000 is a JavaScript number and anchors fill is currently out is a JavaScript variable because I can put like conditions like this and the health statement like this. This is a JavaScript statement and it just works inside of what is QML, which is this mouse area open brackets thingy that you don't see in JavaScript because it's actually not JavaScript. Am I recording this right? Yes. So you can also, and we do this a lot, put some square brackets and actually write full-fledged um, hello from JavaScript. In here, this is JavaScript and you can do almost whatever you can do in actual JavaScript. And we do that as an example on position changed. That is when you change the position of this element, which I haven't, I don't even know what's this about. It's just an example, but when the position changes, then you do if pressed, then var padding equals this is all JavaScript. So you might try to fully ask, wait, 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 is this going to make KDE suck? And the answer is no, because, uh, well, we do already use QML pretty much everywhere in KDE Plasma. And KDE Plasma is not slow by any mean, I think. If you use it on a very low-end device, you won't really notice uh, that it's low. Let's revert to everything. And I'll also add that if you seem to think that KDE Plasma is slow, especially on like slow hardware, it's usually because it takes a bit to open up pop-ups for the very first time. 
If you open up Kickoff as an example for the first time, it will take a while and from the second time and on it will be faster. And that is because Kumar requires a cake, which is built when you first open up a pop-up. You could um, ship with the cake uh, by default, but uh, there are issues with that, like compiling, that's called compiling Kumar. Uh, there are issues with that, uh, which I won't get into it, but usually when one thinks that KD Plasma is low, it's because of that and not because of the JavaScript that runs with QML. Now, couldn't we get rid of it? And yeah, technically yes, but we would have to get rid of QML, of course, because QML does rely on JavaScript. Right now, there is no way, as far as I know, to use QML without JavaScript. Maybe in the future, there are some talks about some compiling QML uh, in a, uh, C, into C++ and that could be something different, but right now it relies on JavaScript and in order to get rid of JavaScript, we would need to get rid of QML. Can we do that? I mean, yes, we can do whatever we want, but that would require years and rewriting pretty much all the user, user interface from scratch. And that's not a good idea because I don't know if you remember the last time we like, <laughs> the last time Kitty rewrote everything from scratch. Well, it's very hard to get it tried on the first try. It's probably going to be buggier than before because when you rewrite everything from scratch, you're going to introduce bug and that's very natural. But uh, should you even consider getting rid of JavaScript on KDE Plasma? Does it slow it down? And it really depends on how you use JavaScript. If you use JavaScript for everything, everything, well, that's going to be an issue. But if you only use it like wisely, uh, only related to the very UI things that are short and doesn't require much computa computational power, that's not good, going to be an issue. Let me make an example. Even this uh, function here, which is looks gigantic, it doesn't actually do much and it's called very rarely. This uh, is actually part of the panels code and it only gets called when you move the mouse while you're dragging, which is the pressed part of it, uh, when you're dragging uh, or moving the mouse while in edit mode. So it's getting called right now as I move my mouse. Again, I might, I, sorry, I wasn't calling, sorry. As I was saying, this code that I showed you before gets called here when I move my mouse and it's not really slow and that actually rarely happens. Edit mode is a rarely thing. And all it does uh, is really to do a couple of checks, a couple of ifs, and then it calls uh, stuff like add applet and add applet is a C++ function. So it does a couple of checks, sets a couple of UI variables that you have to uh, set from QML. And then you just call the C++ function to finish it all. So it doesn't actually have a significant impact on KDE's performance uh, because uh, it does so little and is called not very often. And if you go open a random QML file, which is not, um, I don't know, let me pick a very random one. Just give me. Okay, this is the main QML file of the system monitor. And we can see that JavaScript is being used line 25, which is the very first lines. What are we doing here? We are checking if there exists a current item. And if so, we return the title of this current item plus the minus plus system monitor. And okay, it does make sense. It's pretty simple. It basically says, do I have a page open? And if so, the title of this page is that, um, the name of that page plus system monitor. That's very simple. It's actually the title of the application um, in its entirety. And this relies on JavaScript, but it's so little JavaScript uh, which is called uh, summon not very often because uh, it only changes when you change, I guess, the current item. And it's, it's not going to have a significant impact on the performance. What is going to have a significant impact is the actual part of um, the system monitor actually monitoring things. 
And that's C++, of course. But the UI and the UI-related things are in JavaScript. There are very small snippets of code and they don't impact on the performance that much at all, really. So uh, do, am I happy about the current situation, like this whole QML plus JavaScript plus C++ thingy? Honestly, uh, I don't have much to complain about. I do wish that QML had a way to have like a subset of QML, which uh, maybe you lose some as per aspect of uh, JavaScript, like this array.protocol.map.call, these kind of things. Maybe you can just give up this on certain parts of the code, but then be able to compile these parts of the code to C++. That might improve uh, performance somewhat, but it's not like the current situation is bad or slow, really. You have to wisely use and um, JavaScript and QML. You'd have to know when to implement something on one side or the other. But once you do that, it's pretty good, really. I have nothing to complain about. And uh, the upside of that is that it's really, really, really easy to like change things in QML for first time contributors, which is why when there is something that doesn't like, uh, isn't super slow, doesn't impact performance, I am more than happy to leave it QML and plus JavaScript when possible. Of course, trying to reduce the part of JavaScript if it does per, uh, impact performance, but when it doesn't, and you know, I rewrote the panels code because it was impacting performance in my opinion. But now that it doesn't, as far as I can tell, well, uh, the fact that it's QML means that it's much, much easier to be able to get involved with the panel, maintain it and contribute to it. And the maintain part is pretty important because, you know, if I have to maintain a bunch of C++ code and I'm not very experienced with uh, C++, it's going to be harder Whereas if it's QML, it, I'm going to be I, I'm, I'm going to feel much better about maintaining it, and that's actually pretty important if you do want to have a good panel. Like again, I'm rewriting all of the panels code, and I can do that because it's QML plus JavaScript. Now, it wasn't I think very um, performant before, but now I think it is. I think it's better, hopefully. And it's not like before it was that slow, actually, but I do think that there is an improvement. And uh, if you do want to change something in the panel or improve it, well, it's actually pretty easy. I've showed in many videos how the panels could work. Um, this is the main file of the panel as I'm working on this. And it's rather intuitive, like it even, got, it even has comments. If you add an applet, then you create a new element with that applet called a context applet. I explain what's this in a, a previous video of mine. You create a QML uh, Qt binding, which is explained somewhere, I think, somewhere uh, in a comment. Maybe I deleted the comment accidentally, sorry about that. And then you check if X and Y are more than zero, then you actually insert the new element at the coordinates X and Y. And if the applet is a plasma icon, well, there is a whole comment explaining why that is a hard-coded use case. Well, you actually insert that item at the very middle of the panel. Else you just append it to the elements, which is of course at the end. And then you update the margins. Okay, so this maybe it's not very clear at first like read, but it's not that hard either to understand. Now you could argue that the C++ code would be just as easy to understand, but the C++ code would be detached from the actual UI code that's uh, related to the panel. And with this thing on, I can do like, as an example, where is it? Where is it? Uh, in here, I do use somewhere, somewhere, uh, 
as an example, let's say the layout manager, which is this file here. Now the layout manager has this variable called yeah, layout, which is used throughout the file. And this layout element is actually this UI element called current layout, which is a grid layout. And if all that I shown you before was C++, you wouldn't, wouldn't be able, sorry, to have the layout variable and at the same time, like the same very file, know what you're editing. Sure, you can have both file open, but I think that it's much easier for newcomers and for maintainers to actually deal with code as this one when it doesn't uh, impact performance. And in this case and many other, it doesn't. So KDE does rely on JavaScript pretty much everywhere, but it's not a problem. And I think that we should stop bashing other projects because they use JavaScript, because it's not that JavaScript is bad per se, you could argue that, but it's how you use it. If you use it like for the entire project, your entire project is written in JavaScript, okay, well, of course you can't expect it to be super fast, but if you use it in the right places, it's, going, it's not going to be an issue. If a project is slow, it's not because of JavaScript, unless it's like the entirety of the code is JavaScript, but that's usually not the case. That was it and see you tomorrow.